There's not one guy, one person in the history of this program that's bigger than the program. What's better than this? Guys being dudes. Oh. What's up and welcome into episode number 91 of the Program Guys Podcast. My name is Mason Prince, joined with you as always by Ryan Tyson, Mark Cole, Matt Gant, Patrick Kersenberger. All five guys are back. It's Texas week. Be sure to like, subscribe on our YouTube channel. Trying to hit 2,000 subscribers. Folks, we're like five away from hitting 1,800. Help the boys out. <laughs> Cost you zero dollars. Just like the channel. Just subscribe to the channel. It's not that hard. We appreciate it more than you know. We're dropping fire content that you love to watch every single week. Help us out. Follow us on all of our social media channels. Program Guys with a Z. That's Program Guys with a Z. You can check us out there. Check, go to programguys.com for all of our written content as well. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Amazon Podcasts, wherever you get us, that's where you can find us. Boys, the Oklahoma Sooners and the Texas Longhorns are playing in the Cotton Bowl this weekend on Saturday. We're two days away, and this is arguably the biggest OU Texas game that we've seen in damn near close to two decades. It feels like it's a quite it's in terms of in terms of implications for both teams. I believe it's one of the biggest matchups the, that we've seen in a long, long time. Yeah, I know. this is the best week of the year, baby. I'm oh, so prime. excited. I'm so, so excited. We're like three days away. It's give it to me now. Injected into my veins. Injected into my veins. We're recording this podcast on a Wednesday night for the people. Mark Hall, horns down all the way. Mark, how you feeling, man? Pretty good. <laughs> Pretty good, baby. <laughs> Pretty good, baby. I, I came into the week feeling pretty good. Ooh. And the more you hear... The way we're a roadblock, I feel even better. Yeah, I feel pretty good, baby. I feel pretty good, baby. Sound off like you got a pair. Who's uh, who's going to the game? Mm. There we go. We got three out of the five. Matt, Ryan, and Mark, if you aren't watching on YouTube, they're, those three are the representatives for the program guys inside the Cotton Bowl going to be sitting on the OU side wearing that crimson Boots and on cream. the ground. Stop us ground. if you see us. That's Please right. Do. We'll fight a longhorn. We'll yeah. all do it. It won't be weird. You'll start it, but we'll join yeah. in. Also, yeah. Mark, uh, pl- plug God. Mark, give the people the Twitter spaces information because it's oh, dropping yeah. so, uh, tonight on Thursday. So one of those things that uh, we're, you know, we're, we're new to the media game, but we were invited as the program guys to take part in a Twitter spaces coming up Thursday. That's if you're, dr- if you're listening as it drops, that's today, baby. Thursday night, 7 Central, 8 Eastern. I Look, the guy's name is Parlay Joe. Feel free to look him up. But he he runs these spaces, and they're pretty large. And he's got us coming on. He's got a group of Texas people coming on. And it's going to be a great time. It's going to be me, program guy Matt Gann, and friend of the show, program guy Scuba Duba Ryan Heil. Everyone else just had something else going at Thursday night. Who? That's crazy, right? But... Hey, you know what? You just find ways to have things when the guys need you. Who who saw that coming? That's anyway, right. I know the program's going to roll out because they'll see the, the Twitter in the space and they're going to come through. That's 7 Central tomorrow. Hook us up. Check us out. Check it out. It's the best week of the year. Patrick, what, what does OU Texas mean to you, Patrick? It means everything, baby. <laughs> Actually, I think I'm I'm kind of like in the 10% here. Every what? game matters equally to me. I don't really care if it's Texas or not. I I'm, I'm up for every game no matter How what. do you go from Criminal. it means everything to no, nah, it's just another game in it like is. a span of 2 seconds. <laughs> he doesn't know. He doesn't well, know. A lot more I, just, I wanted to give to I wanted to give, the, we give him wanted, credit for. I wanted to give the content that <laughs> that you guys deserved there but i had to give my honest answer i do feel like it's just another game and that's an okay mentality to have because if you go into it like it's you're completely wrong okay? you're completely wrong all right i i, I will wrong. another day I, at work 
I guarantee you that's the message that that Brent and company try to feed. While it is a big game, you you have to try to treat it like any other game. I guess Patrick has the the in the locker room mentality. Hopefully, I don't know. I would hope they would find this game to be bigger and more important. Matt Gann, let's hear from you, brother. Being a guy that grew up in Norman, Oklahoma, born and raised in Crimson and Cream, this is the ultimate college football game you could ask for especially as an OU fan and as a Texas fan meeting right in the middle the perfect distance between Norman and Austin meeting in the Cotton Bowl the State Fair there's no real atmosphere like it this is the kind of games that you come to OU to play for it's going to be an exhilarating game a game like you said Mason we have not seen so much implications a good ranked matchup as well these are the games you live for and want to go to and see. It's going to be a massive, massive game. 11 a.m. kickoff on ABC. You can check that game. Kirk Herbstreit, Chris Fowler on the call. Not big noon kick, which is good to me because Joel Klatt has heel turned so hard as Lincoln Riley left Norman. There's no one more anti-Oklahoma than Joel Klatt now, and it's wild to see. It's quite interesting. It's fun Would. to see how the media gets greased a little bit. Like Joel Klatt was a big OU guy when Lincoln was here. And Kirk Herbstreet was a big OU guy when Lincoln Riley was here. And then suddenly those quarterbacks are out West and God, guess who looks great? USC does in those guys' eyes. It's not like they're worse analysts for for it, but yeah, the, the game just gets a little bit more clear when you see the way that we're sort of looked aside because Lincoln went another place. Yep. Sorry for the interjection, but no. it's just that's been on my mind with yeah. Kirk. Not as much with Joel Klatt, but because he's Kirk B, but just yeah. it, it it has bothered me. Thank you. I so I have a question on this because I saw some people like on Twitter or something being like, oh, they're going to like Ohio State or Maryland for um big noon kickoff or whatever. And I don't like the game. We ca it came out a long time ago. The game is ABC, right? Like it has I'm the sure. rights to it. So like it, it couldn't have been big noon kickoff, right? Because that's Fox. So like they, I don't... they all descended on Colorado two weeks ago. That's my thing. Oh, I guess you're right. Okay, That's my so maybe they all can and they'll and they'll all anyway they'll all be they'll all be in Columbus or Ann Arbor for Michigan Ohio State. Mm. All the oh, shows I hope they do. I hope they have so much fun at Ohio State and Maryland. I, hope I it's know. A great time. I mean, I don't. But whatever, I don't care personally. From a guy who's done a a pregame show, a college football pregame show inside the State Fair, it's a dang nightmare. It's Rowdy. it's wild, like. Man, I, I love can't it. even I love it so much. I, I can't even imagine. Dude, and the fair in general, I'm, we're talking to you, OU fans. If, if you've been down there, you know what it's like. I love how everybody has their own secret way to get to the fair to avoid traffic that's not even real. Like <laughs> you you know the actual best corn dog stand that's not Fletcher's. You you know you know, like where the best root beer is or whatever it is. Everybody's got their little quirky things, right? For OU Texas. And I think that's what makes it so great is because it is so unique and you have a hundred thousand people there for the game. And, and there just happens to be a fair there at the same time. It's just, it's one of the most, it's why we love college football. It's one of the most unique things that we do period point blank. I get goosebumps every single time when I first walk into the stadium and you just see half crimson, half for an orange. So you hot. just don't see that in any other college football stadium. It's incredibly unique and one of the best rivalries a college football will ever have. And it just so happens that the Big 12, as we, the two biggest teams, enter the SEC, the biggest game of the year for the Big 12, the best two teams going at it in the Cotton Bowl. Couldn't ask for more. I feel I feel like we've delayed long enough. I feel like we got to get into this game. Let's do it. Unless anybody had a little little thing they wanted to no, add. No, real fast. Yeah. Uh, the fair sucks. 
<laughs> on game day, the fair. Yeah, fair. I agree. It game is day. such. I'm with it you. It is such a mess. I'm with like, you. I I went to the fair today. The fair's fine. The fair's fun. It's cool. The fair for a game. Yeah, garbage. Garbage. Dude, and terrible. the tickets. You won't take my cash for your halftime beers. It's upsetting, bro. Mark, do you remember walking three miles bro. last year? Uh, or yes. was it two years ago? I don't even remember Whenever. what it was. We, me and Mark, and I think it was Scuba, Scuba to Ohio, and I think Preston it wasn't was I was I not there? Where was I? You may have been. You may have been. I don't remember. That was the game I went to with Connor Borland. Uh, I went with program guy Sebo. But dude, we had to walk three miles, like away from Uber. the fair to even to even get close to an uber looking at us that's it's, uh that's tradition baby dude, you gotta do it every year it's nuts man. nightmare it's so nightmare. crazy but god for one week in a year embrace the suck you know just embrace Matt, the are you suck. driving no you're a guy who drives no okay no yeah. they have the uh the dart shuttle that runs through the area for free and takes us there and back oh nice what Ooh. area that's uh, sponsored <laughs> Definitely not telling you where I live. <laughs> Sorry. All right. I, I had to I had to take a shot. Okay. Uh the game. The game itself. Do we want to start with the OU offense or the OU defense? What do we, defense. What do we think? Defense. defense. I like I like Matt Gans. Little no, switch up. I like it. All right. Uh so looking at Texas's offense, they rank sixth in the Big 12 in total offense, 478 yards a game. Oklahoma total defense is second in the conference, 319 total yards a game allowed. Um, I saw something today from Joel Klatt, which is funny. We just talked about him. He brought up how this Texas team beating OU last year, 49 to nothing. They're a better team this year. They have a better quarterback. And we'll get to the, the Oklahoma offense in a second. But I just want to say this. Quinn Ewers is, is good. I don't think he's the world beater that people want him to be or make him out to be. He can be a good quarterback. That's fine. But the the knocks that people make on Dylan Gabriel, I see a lot of the same from Quinn Ewers. But Quinn Ewers' crap doesn't stink because Texas is everybody's new new project. We want, to, we want Texas to be back. So Quinn Ewers has to be great. He has to be great because Texas is back. I just I don't I don't see it. I don't. And I I think I think it's going to be tough for OU to get pressure, but I think if you sit back and you make Quinn Ewers decipher your defense and try to pick you apart mentally, I think that's where OU has an advantage because they have the ball hawks on the back end to make you pay. That's a great I point. I think that's I, Yeah, you go, go ahead, back. Mark. No, you go for you it. You go. No, I don't want to. I think that's an amazing point. And that's why I feel pretty confident going to this game is because of our defensive backs are that good. He will have to beat us through the air. And I'm, I'm confident in our defense that they might not be able to do that. How can you not feel confident? You know, OU has like the second most interceptions in the country or something like that. We're the first, I think we're the top scoring defense. Oh no, no, we're second. Yeah, but I mean, the, their interceptions are are high. I think they have. I don't, I don't, I got to look up the number. But Mark, you wanted to make your point. Yeah, that's sort of the matchup of the game for me. Actually, is our defensive secondary against Quinn Ewers and these Texas receivers? I mean, we all know how dangerous Xavier Worthy is. He's not a big guy, but he's faster than anyone any of us has ever seen, and he uses that speed very well. My Big 12 newcomer of the year, A.D. Mitchell, runs 6'4", 196 pounds, and is the kind of receiver that, frankly, we haven't seen. SMU had some big body guys, but they're not talented like this. At tight end, Jatavian Sanders is probably the best player we'll see at the position all year long. So that's a new kind of test for, I mean, the linebacking core and also some of our safeties. This guy runs 6'4", 240 himself. So, I mean, that's bigger than anyone we've played and really have to worry about at that kind of position. And then, you know, the the number three is Jordan Winnington, who has been there for years now and has been making plays 
this whole time. So agreed on we need to be excited about our players. We need to be excited about the talent level surely has bumped up a little bit. And Gentry Williams is going to fight like a dog against Xavier Worthy or A.D. Mitchell. And you know for sure Billy Billy Bowman's going to bring it. Peyton Bowen's going to be down in the box making plays. But on our defense against the pass actually concerns me a little bit more than against the run. Bang. Really? I don't, I disagree. Yeah, Iowa disagree. State running backs were averaging, Iowa State running backs were averaging nine yards or six yards. And if we are going to sit back and let Quinn throw the ball, we're not going to have the pressure to stop their running backs from averaging six plus yards of carry. That's my biggest concern. I hear you. The points we gave up to Iowa State were on long touchdowns through the air. If someone wants to run the ball between the 20s, you go for it. I don't care. I don't want to give up a touchdown. And I believe that we would not be giving up those long rushing touchdowns. We've been sound on the ground when it comes to containment. Matt, get and in there. We haven't played receivers like this. This is going to be the the true test for the Oklahoma defense. Uh, I think it starts up front with the defensive linemen and the linebackers having to stop the run because the thing that Texas does have a pure advantage on is they have a solidified running back, which OU does not. Jonathan Brooks, six foot two oh seven, has carried the rock eighty six times for five ninety seven. That averages at almost seven yards a carry. And this is going to be the best offensive line that OU is probably going to face all year. So if we can't stop the run, then Quinn Ewers is going to have a field day picking apart the defense. So I can't pay rainbows and butterflies right now. I have loved what OU has done so far against less inferior opponents. But this is Texas. They are going to be the best team that we play on all year in the trenches, skill set players, and obviously the best quarterback that the Big 12 is going to play. So I would love, first of all, to see us shut down the running game and see if those DBs can cause some turnovers. But this Texas offensive line has only given up six sacks. That's about one a game. They are probably the best offensive line in the Big 12. So that's why I want to see is in the trenches first, and hopefully Quinn Ewers makes some mistakes on the back end. To your to your point, Matt, the the old adage about OU Texas is the team that runs the ball best wins the game. So that's a that's a very good point on your part. Go ahead, Ryan. Yeah, I think I'm mostly just going to echo everything that that, that Gan just said because I, I agree with all of it. Um, if we're talking about just like you know, I I've also been like extremely impressed with everything OU has put together on the defensive side. This is going to be the best offensive line we have played. This is going to be the best wide receiving group we have played. This is going to be the best running back group we have played. This is going to be the best offensive line and quarterback that we have played. And I might have said one of those twice. But, like, this is going to be the best offense that we play all year. And it's, like, we are, we are going to have to show that we are actually that team. And I know we saw, we saw a couple little cracks last week even though they, they shut those down, they made adjustments, but, and it was great. This is going to be a little bit different. We can make those mistakes against a team like Iowa State that we can then shut out in the second half. You cannot make those mistakes against a team like Texas because they will take advantage of them, and we won't be able to completely suffocate them in the second half like we did with Iowa State. I think we have to be, I think we have to play the cleanest game that we have played all year. And that's asking a lot for a young defense, but they have shown that they've been able to do it. So, I mean, it's, I think it's going to be a really, really tough test. And I think it's going to be a really interesting matchup. The The thing that I'm looking at is, is their offensive line. I think their offensive line is, is very good. They have some huge bodies on their NFL caliber players, just all over the field for Texas. Like we have to be ready for that. And I'm interested to see if we can get pressure on Quinn, because if we cannot get pressure on him and we let Brooks do what he did last week, um, like we're not going to win this game. So I have a stat I'd like to read for you guys, courtesy of Blinken Riley on Twitter, uh, Blinken Riley, good follow during Texas week. He has a lot of, a lot of fire tweets that are, 
that are a lot of fun. Um, this guy named CJ Vogel said Oklahoma will face its first opponent ranked in the top 70 of scoring offense this weekend against Texas. The Longhorn defense has faced four such opponents so far this season. And then Blinken said SMU is 41st in scoring offense at 33.8 points per game. SMU is ranked higher than anyone Texas has faced thus far. So that's interesting facts. to me. Get your facts right. Yeah. How do those things even? So was the first guy just wrong? Yeah. Just wrong. Huh. Just wrong. <laughs> but, uh, Te- you know, yeah, that, Texas, that's easy. Texas was never dude, tied against dude, Wyoming. Pe- ever. People Wyoming. will just say shit, man. Yeah, it's nuts. Uh, but I, so I've, I've already kind of talked about the pressure and the, and the defensive backs, but really to it's the, this has to be a Danny Stutzman God mode game. I and I hate and I'm not trying to put everything on Danny's shoulders because everyone's gonna be like, Well, Mason, you said he sucks. I no. Old How Mason, the tables have turned. Old Mason said he sucked. <laughs> and he did. Tables. And he did. <laughs> he tables. did suck last year. Whether you want to believe it or not, you can believe whatever you want. He improved. And he's very, very good this year. He has, he has to have double digit tackles. He has to be able to be dominant in the run game. And he cannot let Xavier Worthy and A.D. Mitchell run free over the middle of the field and get behind him. Like him, him and the linebacker core as a whole are going to be called upon a ton this week uh, because the defensive backs are going to be focused on not getting beat deep, like Mark said, against Xavier Worthy with blazing speed or A.D. Mitchell, who's a big-ass body. You're going to be focused on not getting beat deep, so that's going to open up the intermediate passing game. That's that's all linebackers and Cheetah. you got to be able to, to be in coverage while also being disciplined in the run game. I don't envy them this week, but this is a big week for them. This is a big week for them. I... It's it's sort of a similar point. We haven't had a defense in decades that causes as much chaos for the offense as this defense does. And there's a very specific group of players that always seem to be around the play when that's happening. And I'm thinking Billy Bowman, Peyton Bowen, Danny Stutzman, Jaron Kanick, Desan McCullough. Incidentally, all the guys that you just mentioned, and part of that is just where they play on the field. Part of that is where plays develop to all of that stuff. Those guys have to be difference makers in a way that is a level beyond. So, yeah, I expect we get the customary Danny Stutzman performance, but can Jaron Kanick also force a fumble and then Desan McCullough take it back? Or can Peyton Bowen make magic happen for the 80th time this season against Texas and just cement himself already six games into the season as a legacy kind of player? That's the kind of thing that I think it's going to take to really knock this offense off course. And we've got the guys to do it. We really had, do have the guys to do it in a way that we just used to talk ourselves into. If you think Matt, this what is do the you same, think, man? if you, if you, th- Matt, I'll get to you right after this. If there's, if you think that this is the same OU defense that lost 49 to nothing last year, then you're about to be sorely mistaken. That's all I got to say about that, Matt. My question to the group is now losing Justin Harrington to seize injury surgery, who steps up? in that cheetah role for the movie forward as well. Cause that's a huge implication and a huge loss for the OU defense, but there's plenty of playmakers to take over. But I think that's one of the biggest things that I think about other than the linebacking and the defensive line who takes over that spot for Justin Aaron team for the rest of the year, who steps in to fill in his void. Well, he only missed, he only played one game. So. It's not a huge concern for me McCullough. because. Yeah, yeah, it's not a huge concern for me because we were talking about the son winning that job to begin with. It's sad. I don't like it, but it's not a huge concern for me. I get where Matt's coming from, though, because we were hearing a ton of good things preseason about, about Justin Harrington yes. and how excited we should be for Justin Harrington. And to have a guy like Desan 
who's played ball at a high level to step in. I'm I'm excited to to see him really own the job as his as his own, I guess. That poor phrase, but that's it. It opens up Peyton Bowen's face. And that's like, yeah, it blows to lose Justin Harrington. He was playing very well, but earned the starting position, but it's more Peyton Bowen. I mean, Harrington will be back next year, according to what BB said. He's going to try to get another yeah, year for, so, for injury. I think so. so um, he'll get it. He'll get it. I'm, I'm sure he'll get it. But yeah, it's it's Dasan or Bowen. I mean, who's going to who's gonna step up and who's going to do it? And I think if you're going to if you're going to prove yourself, this is the game to do it. This is the game where legends are made. Anybody else uh, on the defense before we kind of pivot to the offense real quick? My biggest thing is we cannot have early individual mistakes like we did last week. We can't have a lot of individual mistakes in general, and we have to win the first quarter. We have to. We cannot let them get out to a hot start. Ooh, that's interesting, Patrick, because I I don't think we need to win the first quarter necessarily. We and we can talk about this more. Yeah, we'll get to that. We'll well. get to that. We'll get I to think that we second. need to win every quarter. <laughs> every quarter. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Actually, <laughs> we can lose them all as long as we win the third by enough. Or the fourth at the That's very right. end. That's right. Uh, first. Okay, let us know down below in the comments what you're looking for out of the defense against the Texas offense. Okay, switching over to the OU offense against the Texas defense. Guys, this Texas defense comes in pretty stout. And it's going to be, like we said, it's going to be the toughest test that OU has faced thus far. And that's what we expect, right? Uh, I don't think anybody's going to be shocked by by this development. This this is easily going to be the best team that OU plays this year on either side of the ball. And this is, this is a Dylan Gabriel game that for me. This is, you're going to go as far as Dylan can take you. Because if Dylan plays like he's played all year, I personally think that's good enough to win the game. I do. Uh, but that that's just where I'm at. Ryan, I want to start with you. Your thoughts on the offense. Uh, to me, it's all about the offensive line. Um, Gabriel is not going to be able to do what he did last week if he doesn't have the time to do it. He's not going to be able to perform the same way he's performed all year if he doesn't have the time to do it. Um this defensive line of Texas is extremely talented, very large, and very fast. And our offensive line needs to be able to hold and give Gabriel time in the pocket to be able to throw the ball. I've, you know, I, I think the wide receiver group is extremely talented. We have a lot of weapons. I'm I'm very, very excited about like what that group is becoming. But but they won't be able to do anything if if Gabriel doesn't have the time to do it, and I think that kind of goes back to I'm I'm looking at the offensive line not only from protect Gabriel situation, but can we finally get any sort of run game going? Like I I think Mason you mentioned earlier, whoever runs the most usually wins this game, you know, and like that they control the timing, they control the game if you control the run game. We haven't controlled the run game in any of our games so far. And that worries me that like it's probably not going to happen against Texas just with, you know, it might. We might have a breakout. We could. That would be amazing. But is our offensive line going to be able to hold up against this defensive line to allow a Gabriel enough time in the pocket to be able to throw the ball and b us to actually use our running game to be able to get some yards down the field? So that's what I'm most looking toward. Um, some of the other stuff on offense, I, you know, like we said, I think our wide receiver wide receiver group is great. Use them as much as you can. Keep, don't throw to one specific guy. Keep using all of them like they have done the last couple of weeks. Um, and I would like to see more and more usage of of our tight ends, especially against some of these big Texas defenders. Um, I don't know if that'll happen because we really haven't haven't been using them that much this year. But um, those are some of like overall stuff I'll be watching for. Yeah, Mark, I'm out on the I'm out on the tight end position. <laughs> Hard we out. have too many. We have too many talented receivers and 
at some point running backs I, at this point, give me Caleb Hicks or give me Dalen's mothers in the running back room. I like, I don't care. Cause something's got to work. I know that we're not like angry with Marcus major, but like, are we psyched? Tell me you're psyched with what Marcus has done. No, 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 not really. So just put the, put the skilled fast guys out there. And put one person in the backfield to block. That can be the tight end. I don't care. But you've got to find a way to manufacture explosive plays because all we've done is run the ball for three and a half yards a pop and try to throw the ball downfield. Here's an idea. Set up your fast players to catch the ball and run fast. That's like a quick slant with Andrew Anthony. That's Brennan Thompson just running, doing anything. He's so fast. Uh, Jaquez Petaway got a lot of burn in the first couple games, and you wonder if it's a, uh, okay, you're really like towards the back of the depth chart thing, or it's a, all right, let's scheme something up and use you later on thing. I don't know. Maybe it's really the first, and, and I'm just wishful thinking, looking for 17 to be out there, but I don't think we're going to win this game by uh, – trying to push and push and push a running game that is not breaking through or throwing Austin Stogner onto the field and running a route that he doesn't get open because their version of Danny Stutzman, Jalen Ford, number 41, is just locking his ass down because Austin Stogner can't move anymore. No, let's replace that with Nick Anderson. And let's let Nick Anderson run every route in the book and have his C.D. Lamb game against Texas. That's how you break through. That's how you just really take the top off, I think. So really, Mason, I guess I agree with you. It's a Dylan Gabriel thing, but I think the offense needs to shift too because I'm tired of waiting on backs and tight ends to give me something they're not. Patrick, what do you got? That was a great point, Mark. Look, we rightfully Thanks, so man. called out Jeff Lebby and this offense after only scoring 28 points against uh, SMU and only scoring 20 points against Cincinnati. We said that wasn't good enough, and the commenters told us that Jeff Lebby's hiding stuff for Texas. Well, let's see it. Let's see if anything has changed and that we see this explosive offense. Let's see Austin Stogner in space. Let's see him catch a touchdown pass. Let's see uh, running backs be explosive. I want to see it. And we'll see who's right. I hope we're wrong. My man, Gerald Preston, must have an in with Jeff Levy. Because <laughs> yeah. he he seemed to know, know that Jeff was was saving something. Gerald, let us know down Ooh. below in the comments if uh, who's your inside source. I want to I want to know as well, okay? Matt Gann, what you got, brother? Yeah, it's all great points. I love bringing up the rear to bring in all the insights. I haven't even gone yet. I haven't even gone yet. So you go. Well, you, can, you can bring up my rear as well. Matt just loves it. You promise? Here's the thing. <laughs> The run game has obviously been subpar to Oklahoma standards the past few years, but the run game has to be enough. You have to be able to run it, the ball enough to bring some of those linebackers, bring some of those safeties down if you do want to hit an over-the-top pass. But it really is going to come down to the short and intermediate throws by DGs, completing over 75% of his passes, obviously have a 15 to two inter touchdown to interception ratio. He's actually taking a step up from what he played last year. He's playing at a much, much better level. And so the running game has to be enough. Doesn't have to be 200 yards plus, but we know historically the running game is who wins this game. And we're at disadvantage. There's not been one guy in the running back room that has taken the hold of that number one spot. I'm hoping DG has enough time, but they're going to have to get the ball out quick. I just think if he sits back and tries to throw it deep every play, like Mark was talking about pushing down the field, the Texas defensive line is going to eat up our offensive line. Because, again, our offensive line has been shaky, especially our two inside guards and Bird. I just don't see them holding up long enough to give DG the time that he needs uh, available. So I would say the other two things, Antro Anthony's got to have a big game. It's funny that the two best receivers in the game both were Michigan commits or went to Michigan and came over. Obviously, Anthony went to Michigan, later transferred here. Xavier Worthy was actually committed to Michigan before he actually decommitted and went to Texas. So funny little small world there. But the running game's got to be enough to give DG a little bit of breathing space or the Texas defense is just going to swallow him up all game. 
Perfect. So my final point is really a mixture of what everybody's said already, because to Mark's point about, about the, the passing game and the quick passing game, right? So instead of using your running game to set up your passing game, right? Why not instead do the opposite? Use your passing game to set up your running game. Use those quick passes, passes, those slants to, uh, to Andrew Anthony, to Jaleel Farouk, those slant wheel combinations, quick hitting routes. So those linebackers have to commit more to those out to those quick routes, getting them out of the box, leaving you light box counts, giving you a man advantage inside to be able to run the ball with your running backs. That that's to me seems like a way better formula for success than what Mark mentioned, which is just pounding the rock for pounding the rock's sake. Like that, that may not be the formula for success. Although you will need to run the ball to win the game. Like we've already talked about. I don't think it needs to be your primary focus. I think it can be an offshoot of what you're already doing. Now to the point about Dylan Gabriel, I, I really think he's the best quarterback in this game. I, I truly do. Um, Joel Klatt mentioned earlier, and I I keep bringing up his name. Sorry, Joel, but he he mentioned in a tweet that that Quinn Ewers is the best quarterback that that is going to be on the field. And Texas has improved, and the forty nine to nothing last year wasn't just because Dylan Gabriel was out. It's because Texas is the better team, and they're they're even better this year. I think Dylan Gabriel is better than Quinn Ewers. I truly do. I think he has more experience. He's in this game. He didn't get to play last year. He's probably pissed off he didn't get to play last year. He's going to come out there and show that, hey, this is not the same team that rolled over on their bellies last week or last year. This is a real team, and we're going to be a problem. And we'll see you again in December. That's what I That's what I think this is going to be. And the, the wide receivers – to to everyone's point about the tight ends. I'm done. I'm done with the Austin Sogner, Blake Smith experiment. I'm over it. They don't add anything. You're taking snaps away from Nick Anderson and Jaden Gibson who deserve them. Every time they're on the field, they do good things. Run four wide, run one running back in the backfield, leave him in to protect or spread the field and run it that way with like box counts. Do that. I'm, I'm, I'm over it. Baylor guy. It's weird that we're, yeah, so intended on needing one of those guys in there. Yeah, I'm I'm done. That's uh, that's where I'm at. One quick point as well, talking more about the Texas defense and who they've played. Uh, they've played multiple backup quarterbacks in the Wyoming, so Baylor, many. and Kansas game. Yeah. They've probably that's played the worst quarterback that Alabama has had um, in probably five, six, seven plus years. Here? And not going to discredit that that game at Alabama. But this is also going to be a barometer for Texas's defense because this is going to be the best offense that they're going to play all year as well. <laughs> so going to be really interested to see how the OU offense can compete against the Texas defense, who we probably haven't seen the full potential if there is it on that side of the ball. Thanks for stealing my content from the post game pod. Uh, You're sure. welcome. That is what I'm here for. Thank you so do much. You guys for want, stepping do you guys up. have anything else before I kind of finish up my last point? Oh, no. here we go. You Pat, if it's clear, clear the floor. Oh, shit. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Let me do my yes! thing. Oh! If you're watching our YouTube channel, if you're if you're a fan of the program, Patrick just broke out the hot take bucket hat for the first time in about a year. Patrick, it's been a while. It's been a while. I love it. Here's my hot take. You guys came on saying this is such an important game. It's crucial. We have to win. Blah blah blah. This game doesn't matter. We can lose this game and be just fine, and we can beat Texas in the Big Twelve Championship like we did in 2018, and we went to the playoffs. This game doesn't matter. Stay optimistic if we lose. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Go into next week and win. Win out in the Big 12. This game doesn't matter. And we will win out in the Big 12, win or lose this Saturday. That's my hot take. Patrick's hot take of the week. This game doesn't matter. Let yeah, us know down below in the comments. <laughs> oh, you Texas doesn't matter. It's amazing. This is the biggest week of the year. And Patrick's like, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's just amazing. I We I always love it. say Christmas. when we're the favorites in this game, we always say we can lose this game. 
You can Why always you saying it you now? can literally always win or lose this game. No, no matter I'm saying it, like we can it is it is a rivalry I mean. game. It, it, no, it, I'm it, saying when we are favorited, we always say we can lose this game, still make the playoffs. Why why can't we say that now? No, we, we can't. can say it now. Well, it, the, all right. I think our I think our, I, I think our out of conference schedule is really poor. So yeah. it's if we lose this game, I think it might be tough. Not saying we can't win the Big Twelve, but I think it might be tough. Oh, if we lose the game, win out, win the Big Twelve, we're at least in the top five or six. Yeah, mm-hmm. for sure. I, I you agree know, it's just what's that top four land on? Yeah. Also, to we somebody made this point earlier. I, I can't remember. Who no, it was, leave it on. But you cannot fall behind in the first quarter like you did two years ago because guys, it Caleb Williams is a walk through that door. And I, I just touted Dylan Gabriel. I, I think he's good, but he ain't Caleb. Williams. He ain't Caleb Williams. Okay. He ain't going to put on the Superman cape. He's going to be a great game manager. He can fac- facilitate the offense and spread it around, but he's not going to step up in the pocket, break two tackles and throw it 50 yards to Marvin Mims while yeah. he's diving back. You don't have God on the bench. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like it's just not going to happen. So you cannot fall behind by, especially by three scores. Three scores, you're dead in the water. Yeah. I just, I just, I, truly I, don't think I you agree have the with that. I agree with that. And I, I was the one who was like, I think we could fall behind in the first quarter. When I said that, I meant by like, you know, a touchdown or yeah. like, you know, at ten points, something. Oh, like that. I think uh, to but, Ryan, to your point, I think it's inevitable that at some point you're going to be down by two scores. Uh, yeah. I, I, I think, I think it's inevitable. I and and it's not a, it's not it's not a death sentence. I think you you can come back and be okay, but I think there's going to be a point where especially we've seen Texas come in this game multiple years now and have a good game plan, especially with Sark at the at the helm. They come out there with a good game plan and they hit you in the mouth in the first quarter. And before you look mm-hmm. up, you're you're down 14 nothing and your head's spinning and you're like, where the hell am I? So yeah. They, and you they got can't Ryan let it next happen. to you trying to get you to leave. <laughs> Most likely, yeah. Um, I, I think that I think this defense, what they've shown this year, is it takes a little bit of time for them to settle in. It takes a little bit of time for them to get comfortable. We saw it in the Iowa State game. We saw it a little bit in the Cincinnati game. Um, like I, I think this, with all of the emotion that is going to be on that field, I would not be surprised if we get punched in the mouth in the first quarter and then slowly that defense settles in and we slowly start working our way back. I think this is going to be a fantastic game. No matter what, I think it's going to be close. I'm really excited about it, but I don't like, and I'm telling this to like future myself on Saturday, like when we're, if we ever get down by like 14 to zero, like I I don't think that is a, a death sentence. Like you're saying Mason. I feel you. Uh, anybody else? One more point before we get to our picks. I have a favorite pet idea, and I'm not the first person to ever propose this, but this would be the most wonderful week to break it out. You know how last year and a little early this season, we've been a little perturbed with how the ways we get Jaleel Farouk the ball are always funky and contrived, like jet sweeps and weird little middle screens, shit like that. And you know how we're not getting enough out of the running back position? And you know how Jaleel Farouk is 6'1", 205? I think you add those three things together and you have number three lining up in the backfield for you from play one till play zero this year, this week. And some cool, very fun, interesting things happen. I don't know if we're ever going to get there, but I just, man, it would be a lot of fun because that's the kind of thing that can throw a defense for an entire loop is suddenly there's actually five receivers on the field, but one of them is a running back too. I, I kind of like very fun for me. I kind of like it. It's kind of hard. Mark, it's, it's like last year when we just did the wishbone and everyone was like, oh, this is so cool. And then we just kept doing it. <laughs> so remember Brady and Willis. Remember as long Brady as Willis. we can do that, as long as we don't just like only do that. 
and do like oh sure well yeah well and thinking about how dudes play positions it'd be like a package and yeah you, like you go to it you go off of it but i think he's a dangerous weapon and it's a way to get him back there getting touches while also opening up the receiver reps getting our nick anderson's on the field i think to to, to your point mark about a little gadgetry I think be on the lookout for some for some Jackson Arnold packages for sure. He's a guy who doesn't have a he does who doesn't have a ton of tape. You're you, we talked about Jeff Levy saving it. stuff. I can saving stuff is goofy. Right? Yeah, and the tape and the is the tape goofy. is weird. It's not like he's out there making reads. The the shit we were screaming about three <laughs> weeks ago that we wouldn't let him do. Well, maybe and probably so. Jeff Levy's smarter than us. Maybe he knows what he's doing. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll find out. Uh, all right. Anybody else? Let's make some picks, right? Let's you can it. make, make one final point. If you, if you would like to, while you make your pick, Matt, I'll start with you, man. Uh, by the way, point spread, uh, we got it at six and a half for Texas over under set at 60 and a half is, uh, uh, what we have as of Wednesday night, as we're recording Matt Gann, go ahead. Uh, well, I'll tell you what I'm looking forward to or needs to happen because I don't know if we've done that. Uh, I need the the rush defense to stop Jonathan Brooks. I think that's the biggest thing. That would be the biggest thing I'm looking for, the rush defense and Danny getting in there. Uh, my score prediction, man, I, 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 it's been hard for me thinking about this game. Uh, Texas is really good. You never know what can happen in these games. Uh, I think it's actually going to be a high-scoring affair. I think both defenses are going to get exposed, and it's just going to be one of those shootouts, shootout classics. Uh, the over is 60. I think it's going to be higher than that. I'm going to go, man, <clears throat> I'm going to go 45-42, but I won't let you know which team I'm picking. No, that's no, – No, you're no. such a scumbag. <laughs> yeah, no. Just kidding. Uh, Zach Schmidt hits a uh, game, game-winning field goal, 45-42. Ooh. OU. All right, Patrick, what do you got? Look, Texas should win this game 38 to 20 (laughs) because they have the better quarterback, the better wide receivers, the better offensive line, the better players on average. But it doesn't matter if you have better players in this game. What matters is how you come into it, your mentality, your preparedness, (laughs) and how (laughs) good you play at 11 a.m. in the Cotton Bowl. And that's why I think Oklahoma wins this game 34 to 31. And I like, just did. I had no all idea about where feelings. we were going. It's all about I don't know feelings. how he was going to land the plane, but we got there. And I, I just, I'm impressed, man. You're a real <laughs> roller coaster. Ride yeah, he's a roller coaster tonight, man. I can't believe it. All right, Ryan, what you got? Um, I'm actually going same score prediction as uh, Patrick, but I think Texas is going to win. My point to this is I think Texas is going to win this game, but I think both these teams will meet each other in Dallas in the first weekend of December. Right. And things are going to be maybe a little different in that game, but we'll get to that when we get to that. So I am, I, I, I do think right now, Texas is probably the better team and I think they'll squeak this out, but I think, Oh, you will learn a lot from it. And uh, I, I, I don't think this will wreck our season. Tune in in eight weeks when we talk about the uh, Big 12 championship. All right, go ahead, Mark. Brent Venables and his players have balls of steel this year. Last year, we didn't. They weren't. They were supple balls. Now they're steel. And Oklahoma is going to take that resolve. It's going to get punched in the mouth. It's going to carry it all four quarters. Oklahoma wins 34 to 27. Over by a half. And Oklahoma obviously covers. I like it, man. So here's what I've been jostling with this week. We got to Sunday. And I. I felt good, but not confident. So I like where this OU team is at. I like what I see from them. I like the potential that they show. And the the version of the Oklahoma Sooners that we see in the Cotton Bowl on Saturday will not be the same version of the Oklahoma Sooners we see in December at Jerry World 
in the Big 12 title game. Those, those are two separate entities. And if theoretically you're improving every single week. I think this is the best team Texas has faced. Yeah, I said that. They're the Texas, this is the best team that Texas has faced. And this is the best team that Oklahoma has faced. Each team is gonna give is gonna give each other their best shot. There's oh, you will most undoubtedly be down by two scores at some point early in the game, maybe even late in the game. I think they know how to respond better. And I still don't think it's enough. I have Texas 38, 37. And I think Texas wins this game. But talk to me in December. Because this game doesn't matter. <laughs> no, it's it's not, not true that this matter. game doesn't matter. I'm just <laughs> like, saying yeah, we're all saying, saying it, it doesn't I'm matter. Just more direct. No, it, this game matters a ton, and they're going to play like it matters. <laughs> and there's no moral victories in OU Texas. I completely understand that. But you're going in there, and no one's telling OU that they got a damn shot. If you go oh, in yeah. there and you and you are in the game till the end, that I've I that's as close to a moral victory as you can get because you're going to be a different team in December and you're going to be better. That's just, that's just what I see. Yeah. I'll just say one quick thing. Honorable yeah. mention from an anonymous source. They're telling me 38, 33 OU. OU is going to have three turnovers on the Texas deep or Texas offense. They're going to win 38, 33 honorable mention. Just to throw that out there. All okay. Right. Who? For all for all my listeners out there, they know who they are. My goodness, oh, I stop you get it. a girlfriend, and <laughs> we just you not become her. not her. We lose you for weeks on end, and then <laughs> you come in. He and said she's not, got her. A part. not her. Not yeah, her. I really, I really something. am curious to know. I can't wait to find out. Can't wait to find out if yeah. it happens. Thirty. Have to go. Gonna have to go to the post game to to find out who Matt's right. source is. Okay. Let I us know down it. below in the comments hey. your score predictions. Real fast. Yeah. So everyone but me has Texas scoring at least four touchdowns. Mm. Yeah? yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We're just yeah. we're all putting that down. Yep. For sure. Yeah. Knowing that mm-hmm. Oklahoma has not given up four touchdowns all season. Yep. Yeah. Different offense. Okay. I think I think okay. they're gonna yep. make I think they're gonna make some mistakes like they did. I might last have week. to up mine. I didn't even realize I just put four. Just kidding. <laughs> nah, it's all good. Okay. Uh all right, some recruiting news to get to. We got Jonathan. Hatton Jr. He's a four-star running back, 2025 or 2026. Uh, he's six one two six. He's just 26. Why do we have five there? I have no he's idea. He's 26, dude. Okay, he's 2026. Yeah. 20, Thank you. Uh, four-star running back. He's six one two zero three, according to his Twitter. I love when we do that. It's my favorite thing that we do. Uh, he's a top five running back in the class, though. He's from San Antonio, so uh, that's that's good. It's so far away for me to get like super excited about this right now. I just have so much other OU football things going on in my life right now that how For I'm going to feel years. Yeah. How I'm going to feel in 2020 in, in December of 2025. I'm just not, I'm not ready. I'm not ready yet. It's exciting. It's cool. But like I, there's too much time. There's too much. This time. recruiting staff continues to show us how they are thinking about the future they're on top of the future. It is so good to see. And it it makes me, it allows me to sleep better at night that I know we already have a top running back in the 2026 class. Who's going to help build the class around him? We are so early on. We got Kevin Sperry just killing it with the 2025 class. And now we have this guy right behind him. That's insane. Dude, I will say this. this Kevin guy. Sperry, Kevin Sperry Love posted a video uh, to his, Twitter the other day, it was courtesy of like Oklahoma Sports Network, and they did like the math, like one of those next gen stats things, and tracked his speed, and he topped like twenty miles an hour. That's pretty sick. That's that's fun. That's fun for me. I I enjoyed that's that. That's very good. But yeah, okay. Anyone else on the running back? My bad. Patrick said it. I think. Good job, Pat. Patrick, I'm glad you're sleeping well because, like, OU Texas doesn't mean anything. Yeah, and right. and the the the, 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 <laughs> Nothing the coaches are Patrick the coaches are are recruiting for the future, so they're just helping you sleep at night. Right. I like that exactly. I like that. All right, Matt Gann, let's circle the wagons, brother. What do you say? Yes, sir. Let's do it. Starting with OU women's soccer, 
currently in a losing skid. I mentioned last week they were going to play two tough and top 20 opponents in Texas Tech and UCF, falling both of them uh, 2-0 to Texas Tech and 2-1 in a hard-fought battle against Central Florida. They'll look to bounce back against unranked teams in West Virginia and Cincinnati this week, so their current record at 500 at 6-6-1. and Volleyball also having their own losing skid, losing five straight. They had their own Red River shootout against Texas uh, last week, losing in two straight games, 3-0, 3-0. So Texas Longhorn women sweeping the Oklahoma Sooners. And then after that, losing back-to-back games to Central Florida, 3-1, 3-1. So not a great Big 12 start for Neither one of these soccer or volleyball programs. Volleyball will look to rebound against a two series or two game series against the BYU Cougars this upcoming weekend. Softball, guys, I don't know if you saw this. They, they just keep adding to the 2025 class, adding Berkeley Zach, another top five pitcher, the overall number three. That is, if you haven't counted, I believe four or five in the top 10 overall in that class, including a couple of pitchers, a catcher, and just some absolutely dominant players at their position. So Patty continues to solidify why she deserved a statue years and years ago, but they just continue to reload this team for that 2025 class. So really excited for how that is all shaping up to be. Golf just last week, the men competed in the Ben Hogan Invitational in Fort Worth. Unfortunately, had no boots on the ground, but they were number one going into the final round on Saturday. They were under 17, the par playing really good. Ended up placing fifth on Sunday, had a couple letdowns, but two Sooners in the top 10, Goodman and Campbell, before they have a couple weeks off for their next tournament. So hopefully they can continue the play they were. Again, a couple more programs and basketball coming up as well. So I have a lot more updates here in the next few weeks as some more of those fall sports come into play. But that is it for Circle of the Wagons. Thank you, Matt Gant. Appreciate that. All right. Uh, we're checking in on our program, guys. Pick em League. Brought to you by the Hype Shoe Company. Pat, tell us about Hype Shoe Company real quick. Yeah, absolutely. Our Pick'em League is sponsored by the Hype Shoe Company. You can go get your university collegiate shoes or also customized shoes. So if you want a picture of your dog on the shoes, you can just print them right on the shoe and have them delivered to your house. Top three winners of our Pick'em League will get a free pair of Hype Shoes, folks. If you want to know the scores of the program, guys, Mason is first. I'm second, Mark's third, Ryan's fourth, and I really don't think Matt signed up. <laughs> like, I, don't, I just I don't know what his name is. I here. don't. I don't think here, he signed so. up. I don't think he signed up. I, yeah. I did sign up. It's, it's a mystery where I'm at. I could be at the top. I could be <laughs> all the way at the he bottom. He just wants a pair of hype shoes. He actually won last year, and he was upset he didn't get the free pair of the yeah, hype shoes. Was like, we're not going to take it away from the audience. Yeah. But all we right, should, so I won. Here's a. Uh, <laughs> Here's where we stand in the Pick'em League right now. Big Poppy 10. He's uh he or she in first place with uh, at 30 at 33 and 17. Uh Florida with five exclamation points, 33 and 17. Joey Dean 42, 32 and 18. He's in third. And then in fourth place is John Swami Young. 31 and 19 in fourth place. So be sure to make your picks, get them in before the game kicks off. It's, it's right before the game kicks off. It's like when the game kicks off, that's when this, that's when the picks are locked. So you can pick up until that point, be sure to get your picks in. Remember top three in the pick'em league, get a free pair of hype shoes, courtesy of the hype shoe company and the program guys. All right, boys, PGP MVP of the week time time to wrap up the show with our mvp patrick who you got man i've got baker mayfield baby he is playing so good in the nfl right now that will lead to his team winning the division and he has a bye week this week so he will be (laughs) at the cotton shots fired (laughs) he will be at the cotton bowl supporting his favorite team and he also mentioned this week that he has more big 12 championships than texas would ever will ever have so that's just a fun fact. That's king. That's king stuff right there. Oh, that's really fun. That's king stuff right there. Baker Reagan Mayfield. What a great MVP. All right, Mark, your chance to rebuttal. Who's your MVP? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I that's fine. Um I'm I'm gonna go LVP. 
and I'm going to go with the NCAA on this. So today, Ooh. as we're recording Wednesday, the NCAA either proposed or passed a resolution to reduce the current 60-day transfer portal windows to 45 days. And you can see with every one of these regulations, we are trying to uh, take the cat and put it back in the bag as far as giving these kids the freedom to choose what they're going to do. I understand it doesn't put the schools in the most advantageous position, but it puts the student athletes in a good position. And yeah, a lot of them make poor decisions, enter the portal, and there's not a place for them. That's a free market. And what the NCAA is doing is removing that free market, not allowing these absolute, you know, uh, uh, purveyors of a freaking service the ability to apply their service somewhere and uh, that sucks that's not what the ncaa is there for and it's going to be great when papa sankey just breaks us all off and we're our own thing somewhere else so my mvp lvp ncaa perfect ryan what do you got uh, my MVP is my Minnesota Vikings for actually winning a football game. Um, one and three, baby. I still hate them so much, but congrats to them. They have the best wide receiver in the in the country, and they they're one and three anyway. Um, yeah, Minnesota Vikings. Matt Gann. and we go with another sport that we don't talk about too much: baseball. My Texas Rangers today winning the second game straight in the wild card, advancing to the LDS against the Oilers. They He's not choked real. away <laughs> the division, losing eight games straight, 20 out of 30, their last 40 games, still ended up making the playoffs, beating a really good Tampa Bay Ray team, and they will play the number one team in the AL against the Oilers starting this Saturday, seven-game series. Look out for the Rangers, the pitching, the hitting. They There's a reason why they were the number one offense in the AL all this year. Fact check me if you would like. Texas Rangers MVP. Thank you so much. Hey, you know why who was, didn't play so baseball aggressive. today? You know who didn't play baseball today? And yeah, the cheaters and the the Astros. Oh, the Houston idea. Astros. Yeah. yeah. And they were every single to year, win the division. Every Everyone single year we do this song the and dance. Well, Texas Rangers hit those trash down. cans, baby. Let's get another one. Yeah, it's a it's a damn thing to say every year we do this song and dance about a baseball team. Yeah, that's just Patrick. Name me the winning. first. <laughs> name me the first baseman for the Astros. Jose Altuve. You're such a king. You just didn't. <laughs> you didn't hesitate at all. You yeah, but it's so, not. Yeah, I don't it's, think yeah, it is. No, yeah, but it's, it's not. not. It's so but not. I appreciate the guess. Like, I know. Just naming <laughs> just, okay. the yeah. most recognizable yeah. player on. The he Astros. said it. He said it with so much confidence, though. I like. Yeah. I gotta yeah. give it to Gusto. you, Pat. That was... Okay, but I do I do want to say the in the Rays Rangers series, the Rays should be utterly embarrassed. In yeah. game one, yeah. they had they like seventeen thousand some odd people there. Then they had yeah, the elimination football. elimination game. Your season is over if you lose. They had seventeen thousand people there. You know what's even more embarrassing? The 106 loss Kansas City Royals had 19,000 people at their final home game of the year last week. Wow. Are we? Can there be? It, there's there's no defense to that, Mason. The one thing that I will say it was at like what 2 p.m. Both no, days. Those they're they live in Florida. They're not doing anything. <laughs> not doing anything. They're not doing a damn thing. Yeah, they're not doing okay. the dang thing. That, right. that's, a, that's a that's a lawless, just like Jose Altuve that's a, playing first ignore base. Ignore me. Not doing the dang it's a lawless thing. state. DeSantis isn't even there. It's 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 crazyville down there. There's they don't have, there's no law. There's no law. Anyway, my uh, my PGP MVP <laughs> of the of the week is going to be uh no my LVP. Sorry, my LVP is VAR. VAR oh, yeah. uh, because mm. they took a complete goal away from Liverpool and you may be like, Oh, here goes Mason talking about Liverpool again. No, this is like a international hey, soccer awesome scandal. Place. Yeah. At least it's not the dolphins. We, well, when you lose by 28, <laughs> you don't get any dolphins talk. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> right. Exactly. I mean, I'll talk about him if you want me to, but uh, <laughs> no. So uh, Luis Diaz was, called for offsides 
uh, on the field and they called him for offsides and he scored a goal. Goal didn't count. It was offsides. They went to a VAR check, which is, Pat, what does VAR stand for? It's like a review. like any Yeah, just type like, of review. Yeah, yeah, any type of review. Uh, Virtual and, assistant. V- yeah. Video yeah. referee. Yeah. Video yeah. assistant. Yeah. Re- video yeah. assistant referee. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. that's right. So the yeah. call the call on the field is, the call on the pitch is, it's no goal. VAR thought that the call on the field was it was a good goal. So VAR thought they were confirming the call on the field that Luis Diaz was onside and the goal counted. The goal didn't count. And there's audio that comes out between the conversation between the VAR official and an on-field official and some other people. And they're all basically like, we already fucked up. I'll cut that. So we cut already that, messed cut up. That, cut that. Cut that. Cut that. PG. Oh PG. Uh, yeah, that's crazy that. that they didn't call it back. Yeah, and they and they just <laughs> and they just let it play on, and they're like, "We took a goal away from them." Tough titties, Tabitha. It's <laughs> just, it's bad. Uh, yeah, that's my LVP. I can't believe I did that. That's crazy. <laughs> that was crazy. Oh, that's, that's oh you take that? We'll do I, that to you. <laughs> I, know. Mason, I loved it. Just bleep it. I, yeah, just, I know. Like, just, I'm gonna like, have keep to keep it in. Yeah, Please I'm just gonna keep it in. That's just wild. Okay, holy keep it. In. No, I, I, I don't want to lose. I don't want to lose. Uh, I don't want to lose people. All right, and uh, folks, with that, uh, shoot, episode ninety-one OU Texas Week twenty twenty-three is in the books. You can find us on our post-game pod on Saturday or Sunday, depending on uh, the availability of the boys. But we will have a post-game pod for the people to be sure to tune into that and we'll recap everything that happened in the game at the cotton bowl. You can follow us on all of our social media at program guys with a Z. Remember to subscribe to the channel, help us out, help us hit 2000 subscribers in the next three days, help us hit 2000 subscribers. Uh, just like, and subscribe to this channel helps us out more than, you know, share with five friends. That'd be sick. Follow us on all of our social media program guys with a Z our Spotify, Apple podcasts, Google podcasts, Amazon podcasts, all that stuff. That's where you can find us. We'll see you on Saturday or Sunday. Patrick, take us out. Keep pushing it, baby. Three, 